you. Let me give you a really good definition from the Urban Dictionary of what cuffing season is. It's a season where because of loneliness and desperation, you settle for a relationship that is beneath your standards. Cuffing season is a known season. Somebody's like, Sally, cuffing season? I've never heard of that. I'm telling you right now, it's a season where because of loneliness and desperation. And when I look around, those are two things that are prevailing in every area of culture. I'm lonely. I'm desperate. I don't feel like anybody sees me. And I don't know what else to do. So I'm going to just do this. And because of loneliness and desperation, you settle for a relationship that is beneath your standards. And uh, this may not be for everybody, but I just need to let you know if you're a child of God, if you put your faith in Jesus, if you have been redeemed by what Jesus Christ did and you're a child of God, there is a standard. I'm going to say it again. Okay. The only way you know you're going beneath the standard is there is a standard. And so many people are settling for things that are beneath the standard that God has set for one of his kids. Do you know how many things you're doing right now? You're living in right now? You're working through right now? That is below the standard of what God has prepared for you? And the crazy thing about it is when I say standard, the way you view that word determines how you see God. Because when I said standard, most of you thought rules and regulations. (laughs) When I said standard, you thought like, I can't do this and I can't do this and I can't do this. When I say standard, it's what you get to do. What you get to receive. The standard is you are loved. Uh, The standard is I shall supply all of your needs. The standard is I have plans for you to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. But your view of God is jacked up. The the truth is what I'm finding as I counsel people, as I pray for people, as I look at the DMs that come in to TC and the people that are writing in, what I'm finding out is the truth is many of us are cuffed to something that we love. We love people to give us affirmation. Come on, let's be. The reason we get dressed and do all that and you put all that makeup on, you hate putting the makeup. It makes you break out. You have to cover three new pimples the next time you do this. But you love when people are like, ooh, girl, look out. Ah, ah. You love, like the reason we do what we, we, but the truth of the matter is many of those things we're not in control of. We're cuffed to, it's dragging us around. It's leading our finances. It's making our, <laughs> It's making our faith leak because it's leading us and God's saying in this series I need you to not be cuffed to these things because the truth is you're cuffed to something that you love but it doesn't love you back. There is nothing worse than being in love with somebody or something. Now I know some of y'all ain't never experienced this. But when you out there putting it all on the line for somebody who ain't even checking for you, it's not the I can do anything version of you. The greatest version of you is the disciplined version of you. The greatest version of you is the version that has parameters. No, I don't do that. I don't drink that. I don't go there with these people. I'm focused. I have a prize that's in front of me. I have fixed my eyes on Jesus. I know what I'm supposed to do and that ain't it. I have to stay right here. It's the version of you that has parameters. Because of the parameters that God set for Samson, that was where his strength was found. His strength was locked up in the parameters. Oh my God. The greatest version of you. And God is saying to many of you today, would you please stop loving things that don't love you back? You're going to have to take inventory because I don't know for you. I know for me though. I know for me like 
the, the part of me wanting to be famous or have fans at the beginning of the year when a spit hit the fan God had to use that pain for me I'm just being real with you he had to use that pain for me dealing with that pain going through counseling for that pain working through my own issues for that pain I got free let me say it like this where you lay your head determines your legacy Because Samson lays his head in Delilah's lap, we don't hear about generations of Samson. We don't know if that power was transferable to another generation. Because he laid his life in the wrong lap. 1 Corinthians 7.23 God, my God, somebody say my God, paid a high price for you. So don't be enslaved, don't be cuffed by the world. This scripture has let me know that whatever is not like Christ that I've been cuffed to, he paid a price so I didn't have to be cuffed to. I have a legal right as a child of God to no longer be enslaved to comparison. Y'all, I'm talking about real stuff. I don't want to, I don't have to be enslaved to perversion. I don't have to be cuffed to confusion because of what Christ did for me. I do not have to be cuffed to all of the things of culture. I can be free because I'm paid for.